Hello, my name is uh, Camillo Ricordi. I'm a professor of surgery and director of the Diabetes Research Institute and Cell Transplant Center at the University of Miami. And I have the pleasure to introduce today Dr. Thierry Berni, who is a professor at the University of Geneva, has been a pioneer in islet transplantation in Europe and uh, I had the privilege to collaborate with him for many years, but is becoming president of all the most relevant society in transplantation in, in Europe and beyond, from the European Society of Organ Transplantation to the International uh, Pancreas and Islet uh, Transplant Association and many others. And I'm happy that we can talk today and discuss a little critical updates in islet transplantation and clinical trials of stem cell derived islet transplantation. So uh, welcome Thierry and um, uh, hello to everyone listening to this uh, program. The first uh, <clears throat> subject and question is like, uh, what are the strengths and challenges of current transplantation technology for insulin producing cells? Uh, Thierry, right now, Europe moved way ahead of United States because of the regulatory impediments we are facing in the United States, but I'm looking forward for your view on this topic. Yes, so uh, setting aside the uh, the problems that you just alluded to, uh, i.e. regulation, and we are talking specifically about islet cell transplantation, type 1 diabetes currently is managed by two uh, types of uh, procedures, whole pancreas transplantation, which is very effective, but it's a very uh, heavy uh, surgical procedures with a high uh, morbidity rate, but very good long-term results. Islet uh, transplantation is minimally invasive, has very good results that still have uh, to match those of pancreas transplant, but has proven extremely uh, efficient at controlling um, uh, hypoglycemia unawareness, for example, and uh, also uh, in a quite a significant uh, proportion of patients, even achieving uh, uh, insulin dependence. Um, these are the, the two um, the two modalities, I guess, that the, the two major hurdles that they face is one, uh, the shortage of uh, of donors, because you, you need uh, organ donors to be able to do either of these two procedures. And the second is, of course, the need for a lifelong uh, immunosuppression in order to prevent uh, rejection. And this is something that comes with a burden. Of course, it's better than uh, living with the burden of type 1 diabetes, but it still is a, a significant burden. It's interesting that we we actually recently published the 20 years uh, cumulative survival data on a patient receiving islet transplant. And, uh, and it is interesting that the uh, survival rate at 20 years was 80, 85 uh, percent. That seems even superior to the survival of uh, insulin therapy in the absence of immunosuppression for that age range. So, of course, you wouldn't do an islet transplant in a child or in a very young adult because of uh, the requirement of lifelong anti-rejection treatment. But in this age range, if you're like between 40 and 45 or 40 and 50, islet transplantation may even be considered a life-saving procedure in a way, despite the use of chronic recipient immunosuppression. And uh, that is something that may hopefully change a little the perspective from endocrinologists on how to refer people to islet transplantation. But uh, I would agree that the uh, the requirement for lifelong immunosuppression are severely limiting the applicability of uh, islet transplantation at this uh, time. And we also have recent results in the first success of uh, stem cell derived islet transplant that uh, we can mention because, as uh, Thierry mentioned, the limitation of organ donation that, like, if we have in the United States, like a thousand suitable pancreas a, a year and uh, millions of patients that would uh, want an islet transplant once we will be able to do it without anti-rejection drugs. Uh, this is clearly would impose like a lottery system for who would get access to this precious resource. So that the possibility to have stem cell derived islets and potentially an unlimited source of insulin producing cells is uh, highly desirable. And I was uh, honored to be able to present in Stockholm at the European Society of Diabetes uh, ESD 
which is the largest Congress in the is right now with over 23,000 delegates worldwide. We were able to present the first successful case of uh, stem cell derived islet transplant where a patient became insulin dependent with normal hemoglobin A1C and 99 timing range of glucose uh, levels. So if this will be confirmed and become reproducible, will be huge. Uh, advancement in the field as far as availability of insulin producing cells. And Thierry, how do you see uh, emerging technology, uh, the hope of emerging technology to overcome these pitfalls like uh, both the organ shortage and the immunosuppression? No, but uh, this, this is, you are spot on. I think the uh, the major point of, uh, of these, uh, of uh, stem cell derived beta cell therapy is the fact that in theory, they are potentially uh, uh, going to represent uh, an unlimited off the shelf source of, uh, of um, insulin producing tissue to be transplanted to patients whenever the, the need is. And uh, uh, of course, this is a, this is a major uh, this is, it is not yet a major break, breakthrough. We have had the result from the first three patients. It's so still to be confirmed and reproduced in a larger scale, but uh, it is uh, it is extremely promising what we uh, what we are seeing right now. Um, what need, will need to be done then, the next step will be to uh, to be able to really uh, have uh, these uh, off-the-shelf uh, insulin-producing uh, cells uh, available for any type of patient regarding uh, regardless of blood group uh, and so on and also uh, be able to uh, to move towards some kind of uh, uh, isolation of the cells from the attacks of the immune systems so that you would not only uh, have a uh, an infinite source of uh, of uh, of uh, tissue to cure diabetes but also without the need uh, for uh, lifelong uh, immunosuppression and th thus you would uh, you would uh, uh, address the two uh, hurdles that I alluded to at the beginning of this um, of this uh, module. I, I think is uh, really encouraging the recent paper in Science Advances that was uh, uh, published by the group at uh, Georgia Tech and University of Missouri and Harvard MGH uh, using a fast ligand microgel uh, that show in non-human primate the ability to support and maintain islets preventing rejection for many months without the use of immunosuppression thanks to a novel biotechnology that now eye tolerance is bringing to the clinical trial hopefully in one year where you mix a microgel that present a ligand with the islets and this intercept the lymphocytes that will attack the islet transplant inducing apoptosis or so-called programmed cell death and at the same time, promoting uh, regulatory T cells to develop at the transplant site, maintaining operational tolerance. So this is really impressive because if you can combine then an unlimited source of insulin producing cells with a way to induce immune tolerance without lifelong immunosuppression would be a major quantum leap for the field, in, in my opinion. I agree with that, Camilo. And I think that uh, in terms of uh, isolating cells from the uh, immune system, the field has been uh, concentrated on encapsulating islets in, uh, in physical, mechanical barriers for way too long, and it has never really worked. And I really think that uh, with this uh, type of study and also other studies that are being conducted, for example, at, uh, at the University of Geneva with uh, novel types of hydrogels, I think we are moving towards a concept of encapsulation in which capsules are not physical barriers, but are more a sort of milieu, uh, immunomodulatory milieu in which the cells are uh, embedded and in which they can be protected, made uh, uh, invisible to the immune system, uh, be in contact with uh, with uh, various uh, molecules such as the fast ligand you were you were alluding to, but also others that will uh, confer some kind of uh, immune protection and. Uh, prevent them from being destructed by uh, by the uh, not only uh, uh, immune rejection but also a recurrence of uh, autoimmunity which is a problem uh, who could be uh, in type 1 diabetes definitely and that i would say is a key challenge because if we don't have immunosuppression if you don't eliminate immunosuppression as a need then you don't need stem cell derived islets because there will be enough the islets from multi-organ donor if you have to use chronic recipient immunosuppression so it, 
in a way, it will be the rate limiting step to be able to use unlimited sources will be to, to be able to transplant without lifelong recipient immunosuppression. Well, thank you very much, uh, Professor Bernie Thierry, for, for this uh, brief discussion. And um, thank you all of you for attending. Thank you.